help but tell you what they're up to, even though they might not know. And this is something that Jung, because Jung was a prophet, a psychoanalyst, was a great student of Nietzsche. And Jung came to believe that we all inhabited stories, that the stories, were, the stories we inhabited were actually the structures of value within which we live, and that those stories essentially had an ethic or a moral. And then you, you can start thinking about what the ethics and the morals might be, and you kind of have some sense of that because there's, there's comedic stories and tragic stories and there's evil characters and good characters and so forth. Those are all different characters. But part of the point that Nietzsche is attempting to make here is that the philosopher is in fact aiming at something with his life, with all of his actions. He might not even know what it is, but partly what he's doing in his attempt to philosophize is to articulate that and reveal it to himself and to other people. So then the question becomes, well, what is it that the person is up to? And I would say in some sense that's the ultimate question. And so Nietzsche here in this paragraph is also dealing with the, with the ultimate question in life, which might be, well, to what is your life aimed? And you might say, well, it's not aimed at anything. It's in, I don't know. I, I don't seem to have any coherent set of beliefs. I don't know what I believe. I don't believe in anything either. But that's not the case, because if you didn't believe in anything, you couldn't see have to believe in something to be able to see because you point your eyes at things and you can't organize your vision without having an aim. And so the very act of interacting with the world presupposes an ethic. And then all those micro ethics that you contain within you are organized into some sort of structure, either badly or well, and that structure roughly has an aim. And you might know it and you might not, but that doesn't mean it isn't there. So, so another thing that Nietzsche is alluding to is that you believe things whether or not you think you believe them. In fact, believing them and knowing you believe them aren't even the same thing. And so that people believe all sorts of things that they don't know about. And that partly what they're doing when they're doing philosophy is to try to figure out what those things are. And you, you know, and you can also ask yourself, well, where did they come from? Well, they partly came from you, but you, you're an old thing. Your physical form is three billion years old. And you're in the process of all that. All the death and struggle that went on.
good bad is that they desire his direction. Indeed, to understand how the most abstract metaphysical assertions of a philosopher have been arrived at, it is always well and wise to first ask oneself, what morality do they or does he aim at? So what the question is, what's the person up to? Well, there's an entire nest of snakes underneath that sentence, that sequence of propositions as well. Whoever considers the fundamental impulses of man with a view to determining how far they may appear active is inspiring them. Well, this is why this is going to require anything so complicated to go through. Accordingly, I do not believe that an impulse to knowledge is the father of philosophy, but that another impulse, here as elsewhere, has only made use of knowledge and mistaken knowledge as an instrument. All right, so let's take that apart. Accordingly, I do not believe that an impulse to knowledge is the father of philosophy. So one of the claims, I suppose this would be an enlightened claim, is that people do have a drive to knowledge, and that that drive is, in fact, what underlies the production of such things as philosophy. But Nietzsche questions that, because he's trying to bring us back to consideration of the fact that you can't separate the philosophers mind from the philosopher's being. He's first and foremost a living creature. He's up to something. And the question is, what is it that he's up to? And so you can see the earliest manifestations in a paragraph like this of what later developed into deconstructionist thought. And Right. 